Hey folks, this is the Yaku Cosmopolitan, and today I am joined once again by Evan, Gaijin Baseball, uh, and we're here to talk about the MPB playoffs. The last time we, we convened was right after Interleague, I believe, and a lot has changed then, since then, because at that point, the Hiroshima Carp were still hanging on to first place, the Rakuten Eagles had just won Interleague, the balls were dead as ever and i want to make clear they're still dead but they're less dead now so that's you know a positive um and we recently had the news break that uh tomoyuki sugano is going to try for mlb again going into his age 35 season so a lot of stuff to dive into we'll mostly be talking about the playoffs and giving our takes on the potential japan series matchup here but yeah, how's it been going, Evan? And what did you think about this 2024 MPB regular season? I think it was a it was a good roller coaster season kind of thing. Like it was, there was some predictability at the top of the CL, or sorry, at the top of the PL, where like the Hawks were running away with it. We knew, I think, in May that they were going to get the pennant, but the rest of the playoff picture was a little tighter. Um, and the CL was a complete toss up for months and until. And even up until the Carp went on their, you know, 1995 Angels or 96 Angels style complete collapse where, you know, well, once again, it happened to do with the livening of the balls and a team that was, quite frankly, riding off dead ball merchantry, you know, got exposed for not having any real power. And meanwhile, their home run leader from uh, last year's hit 40-something 40, 40 home runs in the KBO, so... Yeah, that's fun. Um, but um, yeah, it was a, it was a good season. It was a better season than normal. There was a lot more unpredictability to it. You had some teams coming up, some teams falling off. Uh, historically great seasons, historically bad seasons, and uh, just you know, it's a it's it's a good year for baseball when your predictions from the start of the year just completely fall apart, and that's what makes it fun. That's why they play the games. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the Central League for the first couple months of the year looked really mid, to be honest. Like, there was no yeah. team really kind of pulling away. But towards the end, it did get really exciting as, yeah. you know, the Giants and Hiroshima were fighting through the end of August. Then Hiroshima has their free fall, but then Hanshin has their come up. And then the Bay Stars actually finished quite strong, too. So yeah. the CL was, was really good. Um, and then, yeah, like the PL we knew from like the first month that it's going to be soft bank, but, you know, Oryx's, you know, regression this year, um, Lotte and, and the Nippon ham fighters, them kind of duking it out for third place for so much, a second and third for so much of the year. But then, you know, the Eagle swooping in and trying to take that third spot at the end and failing to, it was a pretty exciting year, um, in terms of how the standings, uh, finished and you know entering the playoffs here I think this is one of the stronger fields we've had in the sense that mm -hmm. you know it, it's not one of those years where like the three seed is just like a complete joke of a team and there just has no chance uh, this is yeah. like you know I, you could make the case that any of these teams could go on a run although that's extremely difficult with how the MPB playoffs is with the home field advantage with the ghost win advantage for the pennant winner but still I think it's going to be um a really good playoff. Um, I do want to quickly touch on Sugano, though. What what do you make of Sugano deciding at this point to try to fulfill his dreams? Because, you know, when he was posted in 2020, was it? Um, yeah. And he, you know, was getting MLB offers. But at the very end, you know, he just kind of ran out of time. And he was like, all right, I'm just going to sign this, you know, long extension with Yomiuri. Um, and then he also had injuries. He wasn't pitching that well for a couple of years. So it seemed like that door was completely shut. He was going to finish his career as a Yomiri Giants, Giants legend. But 2024, he has this big renaissance, and he's probably going to win the CL MVP again. He's not the strikeout pitcher he once was, but, I mean, the command is there again. He's throwing hard again. What do you think about Sugano's decision to go to MLB? Is this something that, you know, is going to 
make to elevate his his status when we look back on this even more to be like wow this guy had some serious balls to want to go to mlb this late in his career or is it maybe going to hurt his legacy a little bit i don't think it's going to hurt his legacy uh i think it has uh, certain players it has unfairly hurt their legacy mainly being sumi kawada just yeah. kind of doing like you know i'll pitch for whoever you want just sign me and then he went to pittsburgh and he wasn't that good but hey you know the pirates themselves weren't that good so how much of that was on him but um when it comes to sugano i saw this coming as soon as his uncle wasn't managing the team anymore he's got nothing really keeping him on the team he's got no you know super family connections anymore he can't afford to go do this and if 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 you know this if he feels this is his last shot which it most likely would be more power to him uh do i think he's going to be a hiroki kuroda level kind of ageless wonder i don't think so uh personally because kuroda was always really good it's just he was kind of seen as underrated because of the offensive environment of hiroshima municipal stadium at the time and um when it comes to sugano i think if he does sign with a team that has a good defense behind him, you know, you know, a team like Kansas City or something like that. I feel like he can have success, but I don't think he's going to. I think he's going to be an RA nine level pitcher if he's going to have any success. He's not going to be a FIP type pitcher. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's you know really rare in MLB right now to see thirty five plus pitchers have success. Anyway, I mean, like. Darvish is one of the only ones and obviously he has also had you know I mean it was not injury related this year but he hasn't really pitched much this year uh Scherzer DeGrom Urshaw those guys are like they're good when they pitch but it's you know a lot of time off the field so yeah it's gonna be interesting for for Sagano um I think one year deal with an option on a competitive team and that's you know a key Mm because he needs to be on a contender a uh, contender with a good defense behind yeah, him, and absolutely, fine. and where he doesn't have to be yeah. the race anymore. Yeah, definitely. And I do think he can be in that kind of um, Aaron Savale, Merrill Kelly mold of like, you know, a more pitch to contact bot guy uh, with great command, but also with some you know plus pitches in there. And yeah, I mean, again, I think Sugano, as long as he chooses the the right team, and I, you know. He's not doing this for the bag. He's doing this for an opportunity to, you know, fulfill his dreams and kind of prove to himself that he can do this. So, yeah, I think it's yeah. going to be um, – it, it's an interesting wrench in the off season for one that looked like there wasn't going to be that many big yeah. Japanese players going over this year. There's yeah, Shinosuke there's... Ogasawara. There's maybe Kona Takahashi. We don't know about Roki, but – you know, with Sagano now, like this is kind of like okay. If if nothing else, we have Sagano going over this time. I'm I'm gonna say like when it comes to Roki, unless the Marines win the Japan series, I don't see it happening. Because once again, as like something a lot of people don't seem to realize, as long as he's more valuable to the Marines than the 1.5 million dollars they get maximum for him, he's gonna stay a Marine, and that's not his decision, sadly. Uh, and you know, even then, with like the 1.5 million maximum, that's for teams that would clear out their entire bonus pool for him. And those kind of teams are probably not the teams that he wants to sign with. No, he, he, uh, it's pretty clear he wants to go to either, you know, LA or San Diego. I'm leaning more. If he goes, he's going to San Diego. Yes. I mean, um, well, but, yeah. but um, I don't, I don't think that's this year. And there was a whole stupid rumor from someone who didn't understand the posting system about Murakami, but he shot that down yesterday or a couple of days ago. I'm talking about, yep, I got one more year. I'm making it count kind of thing. And, um, you know, I, I think next year is going to be a lot more fireworks, but this year is going to be relatively quiet outside of Sugano. Yeah, the Roki Sasaki saga has been an interesting one to follow. And yeah, I mean, sometimes that's going to be... We'll know for exhausting. sure. Exhausting. That's yeah. gonna be an exhausting off season. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, it's definitely that. the case though that like uh, MLB teams, you know, insiders, they are pushing the Marines to their limits in terms of like they are begging them. They're telling them you have to post them. Like you, you can tell that it's going to come basically come down to you know, do the Marines 
whether Rookie has that posting clause or not, probably not, based on the fact that they didn't post him when he asked last year. Last year, yeah. the case. It's like, you know, are the Marines going to, you know, swallow that bullet of being like, you know, okay, no. like fine, all these teams are saying this to us. We 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 if they feel like they have to do it. Um, I think there's, it's not impossible, certainly, but yeah, I'm, I'm it's, starting it's to talk more towards it's not gonna, it's probably, they, they run a, they run a business. They're in the business of making money. And once again, as long as a player is more valuable to you on your team than he is off your team, that's, that's just kind of how it works. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, we, we, yeah. And also like I've seen some people talk about backroom deals. Well, that got shot down because of another Lote pitcher being um, Irabu because mm. they had a back backdoor deal with ironically the Padres and Irabu didn't want to play for the Padres so sure. that led to this whole mess um, yeah yeah first place so yeah well speaking of Roki why don't we transition into his team then the Chibolote yeah. Marines they are the number three seed in the Pacific League and they are going up against the two seed Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters up in Escon Field, Hokkaido. This is the first taste of postseason ball that Escon Field gets, that you know, beautiful stadium up there. This is the first taste of postseason ball that Shinjo is getting as manager. Um, and for the regular season, the fighters absolutely manhandled the Marines this year. They went 18-6 and six against them, including 9-3 and three at Escon Field. Overall run differential, a plus 40 as well. This was one of the most lopsided matchups in MPB this year, with the exception of the Marines versus Cebu, um, yeah. which was, you know, historically bad for the Lions. It was like they were 16 and 0 at one point. They ended up going, what, like 21 and 4. Um, but other than that, like the yeah. fighters, this is the matchup they want. They destroyed the Marines this year. And it's just a matter of are they going to take them too lightly because of that? Uh, I, I do think they run the risk of that. But uh, what do you how do you make of this series? I don't think so. I think this is fighters and two. Honestly, this is going to be. I, I won't say it's a cakewalk, but when you're lining up your best starters because they're starting Ito today or tomorrow tomorrow in terms of tomorrow for me today for you, they're starting Ito to kind of get him ready and and get him into the groove so he'll be starting at least one of those games and the the. Fighters, like, power core is just utterly, you know, completely and utterly insane. Running, you know, you run Mizutani through Monami through Kiyomiya through Reyes. There's, I'd argue there's, there's barely, like, there's not a four, four, four Pete in the lineup that's as good as that right now. And um, I, I think, I, I, I don't think it's going to be a cakewalk, but I do think they sweep the Marines. Because I don't see the Marines' offense being able to counter the fighters' offense, and I don't see the Marines' pitching being able to hold down that fighters' offense for long, especially once you get to the bullpen. It, you'd have to, you'd have to absolutely run. I, I guess it'd be Roki and Ojima, or Roki Ojima, Taniichi through the like. You'd have to run them at least eight innings, and that's not something that you can really afford to do with a lot of those guys. Taniichi can do it. Ojima and um, Roki definitely, like, he, he can do a complete game, but not against a competent team. Let's put it that way. He can, he can run complete yeah. games against the Lions, not anyone else. Right. And, I mean, the thing with Roki Sasaki is she has struggled against the, the fighters this year. His worst start of his career was at Escon Field. That being said, he also has it in him to to dominate. He had the eight yeah. inning, one run, twelve strikeout game the following week. Uh, that was as Zosa Marine, but he and and that was granted a, a different looking yeah. fighters team because the fighters in the first half it was kind of like they had you know the breakout catcher Uatamia, um, and, yeah. and he was kind of like you know picking up the offense, and they had you know Manami, but then um, Ariel Martinez hitting cleanup. Then interleague hits. Shun Mizutani has his breakout. Uh, he ends up winning interleague MVP. You know he's been a consistent presence, typically leading off for them ever since. Tamiya kind of fell off, but then starting around July, this emergence, uh, as you yeah. alluded to, of Kotaro Kiyomiya and Framil Reyes hitting three and four. 
Uh, they both just absolutely raked in the second half, two of the best hitters in the PL in the second half. Um, Reyes, I have him at a 173 OPS plus for the season, Kiyomiya at a 169. Those are two yeah. top five hitters in MPB, you know, if you, Hitting you know, got the sample back, size because yeah. they, you know, they didn't yeah. play the whole year, but it's just like, yeah, they are fantastic. That takes pressure off the likes of Manami and Martinez, who can now hit a little bit lower in the lineup. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think with Roki Sasaki, yeah. yeah, and there's also ahead. guys like Yuya Gunji and Daigno Kamikawabata who can come out of nowhere. And you know, the Triple M outfield is just a defensive mastery when you've got Mizutani in left, Matsumoto in center, Manami in right. There's no better defensive outfield in the league. Yeah, quite frankly. Yeah. yeah, it was it was an absolute vacuum. Uh, their outfield, um, them and the them and the Hawks. Uh, nobody was even approaching them. If you look at yeah. uh, defensive runs saved in the outfield, and Matsumoto, you know, after he won the batting title a few years ago, uh, his bat hasn't really come around, but uh, he's still extremely valuable with his defense and his base running. So yeah, the fighters, you're absolutely right. Their position player core is just significantly better than Lote, who are so heavily reliant on the foreign duo of Gregory Polanco and Neftali Soto, both of which finished strong. They had over 20-plus home runs. Um, and for much of the year, they had Hiromi Oka, you know, this journeyman veteran outfielder who was putting up all-star production, but he got hurt, hasn't really gotten back to that level since. So um, the Marines are are weak on that front. I do mm. give the uh, Loti a little bit of a better chance than you, though, just because I, I think it's not impossible for them to roll out Roki and Taneichi and maybe not completely shut down the fighters, but at least keep them, you know, quiet. Uh, and I mm. think if both of them are healthy and at 100%, those are, you know, two of the top five pitchers in MPB, especially if you look at their, their strikeout stuff. So mm. I think they have it in them. The fighters are not a team that is like uh they're they are they are quite strikeout prone they have the second worst strikeout rate in mpb so i think they can be beaten in that regard but i agree in terms of you look um at, at the at the bullpen of the marines you know naoya masuda yes he was solid in the second half but is he really the type of closer you absolutely rely on in, the, in a big playoff game not really uh, Shota Suzuki, the lefty, had a fantastic season. They have him. Rikuto Yokoyama, a guy I've always liked. You know, the, the sidearm throwing mid-90s. The stuff is electric. That's kind of it. Um, you know, Yuki yeah. Kuniyoshi, Hirokazu Sawamura, don't really trust them. So it really heavily comes down to this top front of the rotation for the yeah. biters. Um, and Ojima is so hit or miss. I mean, he can just completely go out yeah. there and get crushed. You can also give them six, seven shutout, but that's typically against, as you mentioned, a team like um, the, the Lions, Lions or Oryx that can't hit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and speaking of Oryx, they they get it. The uh, Marines could have had one of their better relievers back, but they didn't, and he got poached by Oryx and Luis Perdomo, and they signed you know another reprobate and um, oh god, what's his name? He got cut, which was uh, Jimmy Cordero. Jimmy Cordero, yeah. I was thinking like, yeah, it's either, like, I, I, yeah. So Jimmy Cordero was an absolute flop in comparison to Luis Perdomo, but, you know, so it happens when you re-roll on someone and that you didn't need to re-roll on and uh, they go somewhere else. Shocker, you know? Yeah, because Lote the last couple of years have had, like, a really reliable um, import reliever be that Robert Roberto Osuna, Tyron Guerrero, Luis Perdomo, this year yeah. didn't really have that. So that's definitely a weakness for them. Uh, the thing, though, about the fighters' rotation is if Hiromi Ito pitches today, uh, he would not actually line up to pitch in this series. He would be on short rest for Game 3. And so it looks like, you know, they were going to pitch him yesterday when we're recording this. And that would have set him up for game three. But I kind of feel like that was th just them bluffing in the sense that, mm. oh, we have Ito that we can use at any point. But I don't think yeah. they're setting him up here to to pitch unless their backs are against the wall and they absolutely have to. It seems like they want Ito 
to be game one for the next yeah, series. For the PLCS, yeah. Yeah, if they get there. Um, and instead, they're going to go with... Yeah, Takayuki yeah. Kato, the command specialist, gets game one. Uh, and then some combination of Koki Kitayama, who's been emerging as, you know, one of the best strikeout arms in MPB as well. I kind of view him as a Shunpei to Yamashita light, just this guy who can yeah. go out there and, and just carve for, for seven innings with double digit Ks. A little bit inconsistent, uh, has some, you know, wildness to him at times, but, you know, electric. So he's, he, he's Shunpei to Yamashita. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In that sense, yeah, 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 exactly. And then Kanemura, uh, who is you know a rookie of the year uh, candidate, he's not going to win because there's Natsuki Takeuchi of Cebu, but still mm-hmm. solid pitcher. Uh, Sachi Yamasaki, who they brought over from Oryx, has a ton of experience. Um, the thing with Yamasaki also is he's really bad against the Hawks. So if you can use him against Lotte, where he's better, then you can actually set up yeah. yourselves really well for that following series. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think, yeah, especially with... I, I Yeah, I think Sachi Yamasaki, I, I wouldn't start him in Game 3, but if you win Game 1, I could see starting him in Game 2. Just as a kind of, well, let's use him now, so you can save, you know, probably save Kitayama or save someone else for that. I do think Kato does get Game 1. Yep. Um. So, yeah. And uh, sorry about the mix-up with Ito. I thought, it was, I thought the game started on the 16th, not the 12th need them uh but uh yeah and i i think this this fighters marine series like i said earlier won't be a cakewalk but like i do not see a way outside of a miracle and a absolute pitching collapse from the fighters that the marines could win this yeah yeah it's, especially because given the regular season head-to-head it just seems yeah. like the fighters match up so well with lote um and, and could be several reasons why. I mean, the the part of it, I think, is that the Marines are a really good fastball hitting team. The fighters don't throw many fastballs. They have one of the yep. lowest fastball uh, percentages from their pitchers in MPB. And on the other side, flip the coin, um, the fighters hit breaking balls really well. They don't act, they're not a great fastball hitting team, but they hit sliders and splitters. Their run value on that's very high. Well, yeah. guess what? The Marines pitchers throw a yeah. lot of those. So yeah. it's just like the fighters seem to have that perfect combo to counter everything Lotte can throw at them. Um, mm-hmm. The fighters, they're an aggressive offense. They they do have the highest swing rate and one of the highest chase rates in MPB. So that's where I say like if Roki, Taneichi, they're on their A game, they do have the ability to keep the fighters' bats cold. But as long as they stick to what they've been doing in the regular season, Kiyomiya, Reyes, Mizutani, they're going into the playoffs red hot. Yeah, it, this should be a series win for the fighters. So then if the you know fighters move on, they would face the SoftBank Hawks, of course, who went you know 91 and 49 this year, the most wins that an MPB team has had since the 2017 Hawks just you know a juggernaut of a team um and the fighters actually played the hawks really well this year they were the you know they went 500 against them everyone else had a losing record in the pl what would you think of the fighters chances if they do in fact move on to face the soft bang hawks if the marines move on it's a sweep if the fighters move on i could see them taking it i don't think it's likely given home field advantage in fukuoka you know we're, we're traveling the largest distance yeah you can in japan and um you know the the hawks are going to be at home you know sleeping in their beds these next couple weeks whereas the fighters are going to be both well, starting up they're now in sendai then they have to go back up to Sapporo and then play their games and then come all the way down and you know it's, it's not going to be a complete mess but it's going to be a bit uh, taxing on them but not in the sense of like an MLB team where you're going across time zones or anything yeah. but um, I, I think the fighters can push it to a game 6 or at least a game 5 whether or not they win it is whoever's guess but uh, 90 win teams have failed to make the Japan series before granted that was the Hawks 90 win team 
edging out the Lions' 90-win team in 1955. Yeah. So, but it, it, it can happen. Never say never. Um, and I think if there is one team that could theoretically pull this off, it's it's the fighters. Because like you said, everyone else has a losing record against the Hawks. The Hawks walked all over the rest of the Pacific League and the fighters were the only ones that could actually give them, you know, a piece of a, a piece of competitive ball throughout yeah. the year. So, yeah, because... When you look at the head-to-head records, yeah, I mean it is incredible. The Hawks, sixteen and eight against Lotte, sixteen and nine against Rakuten, eighteen and six against Oryx, seventeen and eight against Cebu, twelve and six in interleague against all those Central League teams, and then twelve and twelve against Nippon Ham. So it's like the Fighters can give them a run for their money, and I do think. You know, as good as the Hawks are at home, they had a 700 winning percentage at home. It's going to be awfully hard to take them down, you know, yeah. especially when they're already starting with a 1-0 lead. But uh, an area where I have thought the Hawks are potentially vulnerable the entire season is that starting rotation is pretty inexperienced. Um, yeah. Yvonne Moinello and Ryosuke Otsu, Carter Stewart Jr., they had huge breakout seasons alongside Kohei Arihara, the steady veteran presence. But mm-hmm. if any of those guys falter, um, I, I think the the fighters, you know, might have as good of a rotation as them with how hot Hiromi Ito has been and if they're saving him for, for this series so that he can pitch two games. Um, yeah. You know, Ito has been literally giving them a complete game every single time out. He's three straight complete games. It's just like, if you say that in a context of like MLB, it's just like, okay, that's an obvious hyperbole. No, this is no. literally been <laughs> complete games. The, man, the man's got two Maddoxes on the year. Yeah. You know, exactly. he, he so. went, like, I, I remember when he pulled out the EFIS for his 100th pitch on opening day and people were going, they let him go 100 pitches on opening day. And I'm like, yeah, why would they not? Yeah. The man doesn't throw that. The man doesn't throw 100. He doesn't need to. That's, yeah, and, and anything under, you know, what 130 pitches is honestly pretty pretty normal yeah. for him. Um, and he's been throwing harder in the second half as well. So he, he's not feeling the effects of fatigue. Um, but yeah, I do think the fighters and the Hawks would be a destined matchup. It would be really exciting baseball to see. I do think the Hawks take it, though. It's just you can't pick yeah. against a team that was this good yeah. throughout the entire regular season when they have that big of a advantage um, because the regular season does actually matter in MPB. Um, you know, if it's Lote it in- against the Hawks, do I think Lote can, you know, make it, make a series out of it? Not really. Um, but, no. you know, at least we could see an extra Roki Sasaki start maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be about the only benefit of the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, like, like I said, a 91 team hasn't failed to make the Japan series in 70 years. I don't think that's going to change this year. And uh, one thing I, I, I always I've liked to point it out since we realized the Hawks got 90 wins is that the Hawks have six 90 win seasons in their history. The rest of the league combined seven. So that just kind of shows you, especially with the dynasty, them being the only ones to do it since... Cebu, like the last one before the Hawks was, I think, Cebu in 2002. So, you know, this is a historically, historically good team. I, I think the fighters can't make it a series, but anyone, like if the Marines make it, just just call it. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I do want to counter one of the narratives that's been kind of going around about the Hawks, which is that, oh, like, of course they're good. They spend so much money. They actually have less they develop. Yeah, they have a, a lesser payroll this year than they did last year when they were a third place team. They sent like half their young hitters to drive line over the offseason. They have like they haven't drafted that well in recent years, so it's like they've had to, you know, with with a lot of I wouldn't call them busts, but underwhelming first round picks, they've had to turn a lot of the, the developmental guys, the later round yeah. picks into contributing players. Um and, and yeah, like they you don't get to 90 wins with just money especially yeah. in mpb where you don't have teams that are uh intentionally tanking i mean sabu yeah. was tanking but not intentionally so it, yeah yeah like people like i had someone describe it like oh it's of course they've won 90 games sabu is 
you know, Sabu's obviously tanking. And then I had to explain to them, no, that's not how the NPB draft structure works. If Sabu and SoftBank pick the same guy in this year's draft, they both have an equal shot at it. Like, they literally designed this draft to try and stop tanking because they saw that was going to ha- that was happening uh, even like back in the 70s, the one time where it was like normal. And even then they ran a lottery for seating. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, and yeah. Yeah. I mean, to your point, last year, the Hawks and the Lions, they both picked Natsuki Takeuchi with their Takeuchi. first uh, overall draft pick. God, Im- imagine this Hawks team with Takeuchi. Jesus. Yeah. God. Yeah, exactly. It's like the, the the Hawks, they they settled for Hugo Maeda, the best high school arm, and, and yeah. he had a fantastic season on the farm, although his cup of coffee this week um, on the top team didn't go very well. But yeah, I just think the Hawks, they're also, you know, you have to consider that uh, Yuki Yanagita and Kensuke Kondo, they were not there the, the last couple of weeks of the season. Uh, yeah. Yanagita just finished his rehab, came back for the last few games. Kondo has a bum ankle. Um, this, you know extra week and a half that they're getting with the buy it's so yeah. important for them to get kondo and yanagita back at 100 percent. you know they, they, this team has roya kurihara hotaka yamakawa ukyo shuto kenta imamiya as, as like you know that alone would make you one of the best teams in the league but then you have yeah. yanagita and kondo who are going to be coming back two of the biggest superstars in the league just you know they got the dog in him too right like yanagita i don't think i want anybody else in a High, yeah. high stakes, high pressure environment. The guy has ridiculous top ten player of all time, yeah. literally a top ten player of all time. Like, like to take a team as well built as the Hawks and then throw in a top ten player of all time is just unfair, man. It's just unfair. It's like when you look at every every team that has been built like this in recent years, or like even drawing back 40, 50 years, they've never been able to sustain it. The Hawks have been able to sustain it for a decade. Outside of maybe like, and even then, like people talk about Cebu. Now Cebu had a lot of turnover. Yes, they had like Akiyama and Ishige at the center of it, but there was a lot of churn in that roster. And man, the Hawk like to look at like this Hawks team, and it's kind of the sim- the same Hawks team as 2015, minus maybe a couple starters and a closer. Right, like crazy. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Yeah, I mean, and look at the title winners in the Pacific League. Uh, Ken State Kondo wins the batting title. Otaka Yamakawa wins the home run title. Yamakawa RBI okay. title as well. Uh, stolen base title, Ukyo Shuto. ERA title, Levon Moinello wins title. Kohei Arihara. They just have so much to offer. It's not just one guy. And yeah, I mean, they are susceptible at, at closer, I suppose, because Asun has been so bad this year. Uh, but Darwin's and Hernandez can just step in there, and and I mean that guy has some uh, gaudy, gaudy stuff. Just the command can get away from him a little bit. So yeah, the bullpen can be a little bit shaky, but I don't think it's going to matter when they can out hit everyone. And yeah, the starting rotation, inexperienced as it may be, you know, you you those those arms all have fantastic still seasons. good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's still very good. And and keep in mind that like they could have some. Like there's some bats down on the Hawks farm that are just absolutely, you know, massive. Like this team, if Richard Sunagawa could have put it together, this team could have been even better. Yeah. Which I mean, like, I I, I hope for for his sake, Sunagawa gets active player draft this year because he needs yes. to go somewhere where he's not, you know, completely yeah held behind everyone, especially with Yamakawa now in that role for years, most likely. Yeah, yeah for sure. R- Richard has no role that he can play on the Hawks unfortunately um the fact that like they signed Adam Walker to be DH and he didn't pan out so it's like well DH would have been open for Richard but even then he they didn't get I mean they gave they've given him shots but it's just like they're not giving him enough of a a, a sample size to me like they'll they'll give him like 10 at bats here 10 at bats here he's the kind of guy you got to just keep him in the lineup until he gets hot and then yeah you know once he he figures it out he'll completely i think honestly if i am the lions yeah and richard sinagawa is in the active player draft i'm grabbing him yeah because they their foreign hitters (laughs) completely and utterly fell on their face this year and I, i i thought aguilar would maybe be half decent nope yeah. And then Cordero was just a hole. Yeah. 
yeah. which, which makes those, those Barry Bonds posts on Twitter even funnier. Yeah, but yeah, Cebu, yeah, nothing really went well for them. They could rebuild, you know, half of SoftBank's farm with Daiju Nomura and um, Richard Sunagawa on the infield. But yeah, I think Richard can be like a Seiya Hosokawa type guy of just oh, yeah. give him the oh. chance. Yeah, he's going to strike out a lot, but he's going to absolutely rake. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I think we both have SoftBank making it to the Japan Series. Yeah. Let's move on then to the other side of the bracket for the Central League. The three seed Yokohama DNA Bay Stars take on the two seed Hunching Tigers at Koshian Stadium. Going to be electric in that, uh, you know, baseball cathedral there. Head to head in the regular season was pretty tight, 13 11 in favor of the Tigers, but they were six and six at Koshien. And actually, the Bay Stars had a better run differential. So these teams match up very closely, I think. Um, they were tied as well in terms of homers against one another. The Bay Stars did have more steals, but it's just like, yeah, I think these teams match up very well. The main difference is the Bay Stars are a good hitting team. The Tigers are a good pitching team. So this is, you know, the yin and yang matchup here. Um, yeah. What do you think about the Bay Stars' chances to upset the Tigers? I think it's a decent chance. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a, you know, I, I won't call it 50 I won't call it 50-50 because the Tigers do have home field advantage. And as much as it uh, didn't play out over the season, it still is a massive boost for the playoffs, especially. Um, we saw that in the Japan series last year, or how the Tigers kind of completely, once they once they got, you know, 14 kilometers down the road yeah. and figured themselves out and just kind of, and just kind of moved. Um. I, I feel that the Tigers can take this and the Tigers should take this mainly because they can focus on shutting down that Bay Stars hitting core, but that is a Bay Stars hitting core that is hard to shut down once they're on. So you, you can't let Austin and and Maki and those guys get hot. If you, if you do, this is the Bay Stars series. Um, but, you know, the Bay Stars are missing their ace and their number three starter from last year. So this is not like it. And the Tigers are not a bad offensive team. You know, you got Chikamoto, you have Marishta, you have Sasso. And I think this is, well, I'm not going to call it a toss up, but it's about as close to a toss up as a playoff series can get, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the Tigers, obviously they took down the Bay stars a couple years ago in Yokohama, got to celebrate on the field there. Um, on a game-ending double play with the bases loaded. So the Bay Stars are looking for revenge. Um, their manager, Daisuke Miura, yet to advance past this stage. Uh, and then the, on the other side, Akinobu Okada, or the Tigers, has announced that he will retire at the conclusion yeah. of, of, the, of the season. And that is actually one thing I wanted to ask you is, does this year even matter for, for Okada? Like, isn't his legacy set because he got his chip in 2023? Would it yeah. mean anything to him if he even lost this series? I think it would still mean something because he he wants to go out as high as he possibly can, and I I think making the CLCS, you know, would be about as high as he probably like uh, would would make him happy. He doesn't want to go out in the first round, yeah, especially at home. Like going going out at the Tokyo Dome on the road in the CLCS, yeah, that's fine. But losing a wild card round at home is not not how you'd want to go out. Uh, but his legacy is secure. He did what he needed to do. He got the monkey off his back for 2005 and won a title. Uh, I The hunger isn't there anymore for him. And if he wants to step down, that's, that's more to his thing. I'm more concerned about Kyuji Fujikawa being the name everyone's fingering to replace him. Yeah, that dude's just a mystery as to how well he's going to do. Yeah, I mean... He's basically a YouTuber, so it's like yeah, he hasn't. It's yeah, it's one of the only thoughts we have from him are like him doing interviews with like MLB Japanese players and like occasionally talking about his fastball from from back in the day. So it's just like, yeah, he's he's a tough one, but you know, obviously younger generation. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see how this team changes. Um, Yano was obviously you know yeah. a younger one as well, and I liked a lot of what Yano did um, as, mm -hmm. as much as he got hated he had a lot more 
of a dynamic way of, of using the players. I think Okada has always been like, he just cements his roster. This is the team you're rolling out, you know, mm-hmm. um, he has stop. done, yeah, he has done some good things in terms of like, you know, getting the guys to be way more patient. The Hanshin has had the lowest swing rate in MPB for two straight years. They're very patient. They walk a lot. They get on base. Um, and, you know, it's it's pretty hard to mess up with how good the pitching staff is, but he does seem to manage the pitching pretty well. Um, and, yeah, I mean, speaking to that pitching, like, Hiroto Saiki game one, a Sawamura Award contender alongside yeah. Sugano and Hiroto Takahashi. Um, Haruto Takahashi, the other Takahashi, the the lefty Takahashi, who, you know, has thrown, what, 30 innings this season um, after missing two years with Tommy John and another injury. So uh, he is just an absolute stud when he's healthy. So it's good that he's back at this point. Um, but obviously, you know, he has not thrown much the last couple of years. So yeah. this is a high pressure environment to kind of throw him into. Um, and then Shoki Murakami, who won CL Rookie of the Year and yeah. MVP last year, he didn't have the best second half. So I think they're looking at him as as the Game 3 guy or, you know, if they move on for Game 1 of the next series. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, you know, to your point about, like, Okada wanting to go out with, with a bang, um, I really think the Tigers wanted to win the pennant this year. Like, it seems... yeah. You know, for for so much of the year, it was out of reach. But then they got within one game of Yomiuri in that yeah. like second to last week. And then like, I mean, when Shoki Murakami, they brought him in relief against Hiroshima in in the eleventh, yeah. twelfth inning, and he he didn't he didn't blow it. It was the fact that the outfield was playing in. But he started crying when they lost the game, and they and the pennant got out of hand. Like it seems like they were putting so much of their heart into like, oh, we're gonna you know we're gonna. So we're going to pass up Yomiuri. We're going to take the pen in when they're least expecting it. And then we're, we're going to take that momentum into the Japan series. They've been slowed down a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. That, that they're, rotation they're, is just so good. The thing is with, with Hanshin is last year, they were the best team in the league on paper and they don't have like the, the thing about Yomiuri now is they're not squandering their potential as much as Abe has been frustrating. Abe is not as, you know, bad of a manager as Hara was and I, I, I do catch Flack for saying Hara was a bad manager and he's like oh he won three three titles yes he won three titles the last one came 12 years ago the game has passed him by and you know getting it like having a team that is you know on paper the third best in the league and not making the playoffs with it that was kind of his you know the, the biggest the biggest uh, indictment on his time there yeah but i do think that um I, I do think that okada has redeemed a bit of his reputation thanks to last year's championship and this year he's still frustrating to watch because he still makes absolutely boneheaded decisions but that's that's what's going to happen so um you know what you get with him and i think he is a better manager than miura i think miura does not manage his bullpen particularly well but that's just me um, because I, I think Mira has this idea that every starter is like him. Yeah, you know when he is um, arguably the most overrated starting pitcher in history, and like he, he wasn't bad. He's just an accumulator, and uh, I, I've caught hell for saying that as well. But it's but it's true, and um, I I think that if there's one manager that Okada can tactically outplay even just by being himself and being this is my lineup what what are you going to do it's Mira so i i think the i i i say tigers in 3 yeah and with the base stars yeah i mean miura doesn't help his case um but the base stars just don't have much to work with in that staff yeah. um katsuki azuma had that 32 consecutive quality start streak he's fantastic has such a high floor yeah. although i will say after that 32 straight quality starts, he had like three or four straight non-quality starts. So that's interesting as he enters the playoffs. Um, and then, you know, game two and three likely goes to the imports. Uh, Andre Jackson, who was top five in the CL and ERA in the second half. So he's been hot. And then Kay, who has pretty solid underlying numbers, but hasn't really had the results. 
Um, Shinichi Onuki finished the season strong. Maybe he gets a shot. Uh, Teruki Yoshino threw six no-hit innings against Hanshin the last time. So another, you know, rookie to maybe use as like a swing man. But if you get to the base stars pen, it's kind of over. Like Kohei yeah. Morihara, is, I, I'll give him credit. Like he went from kind of being a nothing, being a nobody to from, from Rakuten to establishing himself as a really good closer. After that, though, it's just so shaky. They have some guys there. You know, Wendell Kin's good. Uh, Yasuaki Yamasaki can be good. Hayate Nakagawa, the, the Submariner, you know, Yuya Sakamoto, Rowan Wick. But it's just, it's not as good as Hanshin's Super Bullpen. Hanshin has a Super Bullpen. Like, they can go by committee there in, in 7 8 9 with Javi Guerra, who throws 100, Suguro Yibazaki, who was the closer last year. Takuma Kirishiki, who leads the league and holds. Daichi Ishii, who maybe has some of the best stuff in MPB. <laughs> Hidetaka Okadome with, with his weird, you know, slot. Um, Tomida Ren. Uh, Ren Tomida, the uh, rookie who had a sub-1 ERA. Granted, a lot of that was in uh, low leverage, so, you know, people don't talk about him. But it's just like, Hanshin's, like, fifth or sixth best reliever is probably the Bay Star's best reliever. So, yeah. Hanshin has the numbers advantage there. It's just a matter of can the Bay Stars bats, and the bats are really good, can they break through? Austin, yeah. Maki, Toshiro Miyazaki, um, Keita Sano, Yoshi Tsutsugo off the bench. Like they are they can be explosive, much like the fighters lineup. They have that in them, but I think the Tigers pitching can pull through here. Yeah. Um, especially, especially because, yeah, yeah, go ahead. yeah especially with, with the, with the base stars, the thing that separates the base stars from the fighters is that the fighters can play defense and the base stars cannot, the base stars are running five first basemen pretty much yeah. on their roster. I mean, even if they call up Mike Ford for the playoffs, like I don't another first baseman. Yeah. Another first baseman in your thing. And you don't have a DH and like, your, your first baseman, your second baseman, and your third baseman are all first basemen. Your shortstop is old or inexperienced. And your outfield is, quite frankly, a first baseman, a good center fielder, and a right fielder by committee. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the defense for DNA is like horrendous. Um, yeah. Hodgkin actually rated really bad this year as well, which is surprising mm -hmm. considering how good they were last year. But I think. If you use your eyes, you know, you'd yeah. rather have Hanching's defense than um, DNA's defense. And, and they have a few guys that really weigh it down, like Sato at third base just isn't good. So, yeah. No. Um, I think, okay, so let, let's let's play, you know, the, the probability game here with um, if it's like 55 to 60% Hanching, they move on to face Yomiri. Yeah. Uh, the Giants, they went. Uh, 16 and 8 against the Bay Stars. So, you know, definitely have their number. They were 12 and 12 against the Tigers. So, kind of like that Hawks fighter situation where the Tigers are going to give them a run for their money. Yeah. Um, what would you rate, you know, e either of these teams' chances of beating Yomiri in the championship series? If it's the Tigers, like if, if it's the Bay Stars, I say Giants in four. Mm hmm. Quite frankly, um, Bay Sharks would probably squeak out a win, but the Giants will, you know, they'll run, you know, Sugano, Togo, Griffin, Yamazaki by you and just kind of wipe the floor. Uh, when it comes to the Tigers, I think there is going to be, that is going to be a pitcher's duel and it's going to be the, the offense that changes things. Um, I've heard some rumblings that Hernandez will be back. I don't think he will be back. Uh, but he is he's practicing with the team, so never say never. That was an um, ugly injury he got, man. Like his yeah, wrist was like falling off of his It was like it was yeah. pretty much just like, oh man, the Giants finally had a great foreign signing. I wonder what's gonna oh you know? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. luckily, you know, they did have Coco Montez who who can hit a little bit. You know, he's not really yeah. he hasn't shown the power, but he can he can hit. Good guy off the bench. Good guy, yeah. good yeah, good guy off the bench to have Coco Montez there. Uh, what I think that um, I, I think the decider is going to be the offense on that, and I just think Okamoto can Okamoto Sakamoto can carry that. Um, yeah, Maru as that, well. Maru, oh yeah, Maru. Like 
Yokomoto, Sakamoto, Maru is a better one, two, three than, you know, Shikamoto, Sato, Marishita. It, it, it's, it's a toss up, but I think there's more power in, in that Giants lineup. And that could be the difference, especially when you're dealing with, you know, a pitcher's duel. You're not going to be squeaking what people buy. You're going to win with the long ball. You're going to take advantage of the mistakes. And I think the Giants are the better, are, are better equipped to take advantage of those mistakes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The Giants are a deeper lineup. Um, it's not that the Tigers have a bad lineup, but they're just really bipolar. Whereas the Giants, mm. you know, I think they kind of underperformed what they should have in terms of the name value yeah. they have in the lineup, but they're still better. Um, and yeah, the main difference between this year and like last year for the Giants is like yeah. they just have so much stability now with the pitching. Like mm-hmm. Sugano, Togo, Griffin are phenomenal. Add to that, you know, Haruto Inoue. Yeah. Um, breaking out as a rookie, um, like that already, you have a good enough rotation to win the Japan series. And I think Riffin's super underrated, by the way. Like Riffin has the best oh, breakout rate minus walk rate in MPB. Um, and like, I don't think the Giants underrate him, actually. It's more like fans underrate him, but like the Giants know yeah. he's really, really good, especially since he added that slider in June. He's just been a completely different pitcher. Best foreign pitcher we've seen in MPB in a while, maybe since like for a lefty, maybe since like a Chris Johnson. He is, I, I think you're going to put him up in the, in the ideals of, you know, with Seth Griesinger, of Miles Michaelis yeah. in that time and that, in that kind of way of really showing off the potential. I don't think he's like, I don't think he's like an Eric Fetty in that in that sense, which I, the Giants were going after Fetty as well, with, like last year. But Fetty wanted a low pressure environment, so he went to Chicago and you know absolutely dominated. Yeah. Hanshin do, do have the rotation to go toe to toe with Yomiuri. Oh yeah. Uh, I just don't think they have the Hanshin's offense. got the Hanshin's got the second best rotation in the league after or, or the third third best rotation in the league after Oryx and Lote and neither of those teams are in their league yeah so um, yeah and if you go by uh, fifth minus for just like, adding the bullpen in, in as well I think they're probably first or second so it's like yeah Hanshin's pitching is great they're, these are going to be a lot of low scoring games the last two times the Giants and Tigers faced in the regular season was both those games were one nothing and I think those are the types of games you're going to see here uh, and it definitely helps that the Giants have Taisei in the ninth inning, obviously, yeah. you know, yeah. just the most electric closer in MPB, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I think Hanshin have a shot against the Giants, the base starters, absolutely not. But even so, you know, Giants and Hawks is the likely Japan series matchup. That's probably how it's going to go down. And then, you know, in that scenario, what is your mm-hmm. prediction? Oh uh, well, I'll just I'll just give you in, in straight who's the better team on paper. The Giants are a forty war team on paper. That's really good. That's quite good. The Hawks are a sixty war team on paper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which just kind of goes to show, like twenty three point two war on the pitching side, on the batting side, thirty seven point nine war from their entire hitting core which i have to i gotta check the leaderboards man i that is all time level that is tied with the 1952 yamiuri giants for the 10th best or the 12th best the the 11th best offensive unit of all time like yeah utter utter ridiculousness i i think that this is going to be another case of the Hawks getting revenge for the curb stomping in the 50s. Because that's what I feel like the 2019 and 2020 were. Which were, oh yeah, remember when you walked all over us in the 1950s? Guess what? <laughs> we're back. <laughs> um, And, um, you know, Giants-Hawks is arguably, I'd say, the greatest interleague rivalry yeah. in the league. Because it goes back... Yeah, it goes back to when the Hawks were founded in 1938 because the Giants didn't want them in the yeah. league and Nankai forced their way in. And, you know, in in that way, they've they've kind of disliked each other ever since. And then, you know, the Giants stole uh, Nankai's ace in 1947 and they've just completely hated each other ever since. Like when, when Besho left. So I think this... Um, 
this could be i think it's going to be a closer japan series than a lot of people think if it is giants hawks if the hawks are facing anyone else if the hawks face the tigers this is a curb stomp uh quite frankly the tigers do not have the offense to keep up with the hawks and they would get like overwhelmed i think the giants have the best chance to do something with it but i still think i i'd say hawks in five on if it's Giants Hawks in the Japan series. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would give the Giants a slightly better chance, but only if like some of the veterans like really pull mm-hmm. through. Um because like Sakamoto and Maru, they're still good, but they're not in their primes. And you know, yeah. if they can revive that a little bit, then we're talking like they have an actual really deep yeah. explosive lineup but otherwise i just think they're a little bit lacking and the areas that the giants are strong it's like well the hawks are a little bit stronger in pretty much all of them uh, i think yeah. the rotation i would actually take the giants because you know they have three ace caliber pitchers in sugano togo griffin uh not sure we can exactly say that about the the hawks especially given the the difference in experience level but mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's like I'm taking the Hawks pretty much across the board. And so I'd probably go SoftBank in in six or... S- I, I, I'd love to see it go seven. Like, I think this could be a really good series. It's going to be a lot better than like 2019, 2020. Like, you, well, you know, those were oh, yeah. just easy sweeps because uh, the Hawks pitching with, with Senga and, and company, they just completely shut down the Giants. And the Giants just did not have the depth in the pitching uh, to, to compete. And yeah, they made a fool out of uh, Tatsunori Hara. Uh, oh yeah, I, I still remember a Hawks fan got so upset uh, that he had tickets for Game Five <laughs> both years and didn't get it. That he threatened to bomb the time <laughs> the Giants would get their shit together. And I'm just sitting there like that is a level of your team is too good that you're upset that you're that level of upset. And yeah, I, I think um, starting pitching wise, the Giants just edge the fighters, just edge the the Hawks out. It's a lot closer than a lot of people think, but bullpen, Hawks bullpen is infinitely better. Yeah, um, and quite front and their offense is infinitely better. And I just think that this this won't be a contest. Uh, the only only hope the Giants or Tigers would have is the fighters pulling up an upset and then it's a close then we get ourselves a series if it's fighters tigers or fighters giants we have ourselves a series especially with the fighters to be playing with fire because the fighters have played the giants in the japan series what three times and have never beaten them and they, they're going to want to you know obviously 81 2009 2012 so they're they'd be playing with fire to try and finally you know get that monkey off their back and much in the same way the Giants will be playing with fire, especially I feel like a guy like Maru. Yeah. If like if you let him get hot, he's going to have the series of his life because he left Hiroshima because he saw the way the, the way the win was going and he wanted to win a championship. And he's faced the Hawks before four like he's faced three times. He lost to the Hawks three years in a row in in the Japan series. He does not want to lose again. And um, I, I I feel that if if someone is going to turn the tide of that series, it is going to be an absolutely furious Yoshihiro Maru just kind of going like, you know what, I am not losing to these fuckers again. Let's just let's just go. But um, yeah, I don't I don't if if the Hawks make it out of the PLCS, I I don't want to say just give them the Japan series because obviously anything can happen, anyone can win on the day. But for for the Hawks, the Japan series is the PLCS. If they can get out of that, yeah. Yeah, I, I do think Yomiri's bullpen is is really good. The Hawks are deeper, but I, I think the Giants with Taisei, I mean, that's just so locked down. That's, that's I mean, they have a better closer than, yeah. than Hawks hands they, down. And yeah. they have guys who are really volatile, but if you get them on a good day, it's like, you know, like Baldonado and Keller, those types are like... Um, and, you know, uh, Hiromasa Funabasama was actually, you know, we mentioned him like in the preseason show because of a funny name, but uh, he might win rookie of the year because the rookie of the year field in the CL is so weak. And he had, oh, yeah. you know, a, a great season out of the pen. Um, 
Uh, Yuki Nishidate, their top pick from last year, he started the year in the bullpen. They sent him down to the farm to get stretched out as a starter. He looked pretty good when he when he came back um, and was used as kind of a long relief guy. Um, so I, I think the Giants, their pitching can definitely be better than the Hawks. It's just I don't think the hitting can be better. Mm-hmm. Uh, the hitting is just the Hawks have too many plan Bs, plan Cs, plans D, yeah. plan Ds. Like, Again, with the regular season, it's like Yanagita went down. Oh, well, we have Tomiya Masaki. We have Tatsuru Yanagimachi. Those guys are going to just step up, platoon, and be a 120 WRC+. Plus. Um, yeah. Kondo goes down. That's okay. We still have you know Yamakawa, Kurihara doing all the work. It's just like the Giants don't have that luxury. They need, as you mentioned, Maru. Yeah. They need Sakamoto to step up because his offense actually did tail off a lot this season. Yeah. Okamoto... Um, I'm so pissed that he didn't get to 30 homers this year because of the dead balls. Man deserved another 30 homer season. He, yeah, you know, it's this is going to be viewed as like, oh, he had one of his worst career seasons when he actually was one of the best hitters in the league. So it's like, yeah, you know, he's going to get hate um, if he doesn't, you know, deliver big time in the playoffs. But yeah, I think I think we have like probably with 80 percent certainty, it's going to be. The Soft Bank Hawks and the Yomiri Giants in the Japan series. And yeah, we're both taking the Hawks. I think the Giants have a slightly better shot. But yeah, if we get any of those other kind of wild series yeah. like Fighters, Tigers, that that would be maybe even more exciting just because I, that would I be like really such a, you know, it. you have no idea what's going to happen at that point. I also wanted to ask, you know, Pacific League MVP, Kensuke Kondo, I think pretty straightforward. Central League, since it has to go to the pennant winner, there's a lot of choices. I mean, uh, Tomiyuki Sugano, I think, is most likely, given the fact that MPB voters love to go to pitchers. But yeah. Kazuma Okamoto, not impossible. He's the captain of the team. He kept that offense going. Uh, Naoki Yoshikawa actually has a case in terms of war, and is, he's mm-hmm. such a good defender. I mean, he's the best I, I defending think baseman in MPB since Kikuchi. But you know who? Uh, I, Togo... You know, who, who would you give it to? I would actually give my vote to Okamoto or Yoshikawa. Um, but I feel like the, it's going to be between Okamoto and Sugano. I do think Sugano is going to get it. Although I think I do think he actually hurt his chances by saying he's going to leave. Because I feel like they're not going to want like some voters who are like old, older and grumpier. Like, you know, he's leaving. Fuck him. You know, I'm not going <laughs> to give him a vote. You know, I, I do feel like that's that will happen, and hey, that happens in MLB too. Given given some uh, some of the MVP votes we've seen over the last few years, because um, you got to remember, not every journalist thinks like you do. And uh, I hope Okamoto gets it. I wouldn't be mad if Sugano gets it. I just hope for the PL MVP for the sake of the league and its standing that Yamakawa doesn't get it. I hope. Yeah. I hope he has. I, I hope he has forever got himself out of it, but he did win the home run title and the RBI title. That's it's when it comes to MVPs, that is very rare that they don't get it. Uh, we're talking about like MVPs that have won it, like the majority of like, like my always racking up his MVPs. He was doing that. Uh, I think the last time we saw a guy not do that and not be the home run leader on his team, I think it was maybe Gita in 2015. Yeah, uh, but well, like, and I, yeah, I was gonna ask, don't you think this vote is kind of similar to 2016 CL where they gave it to Arai, who was like a three war first baseman but had more RBIs than Seiya Suzuki, who had like eight war. Isn't this like they, really similar with Yamakawa? Is it a three to four? This, four this, feel, this feel this feel like that, but yeah. I hope the thing about Arai was he had this reputation as like you know a well liked guy. Yamakawa did have that reputation until you know he decided to at minimum cheat on his wife. Yeah, because last year they gave it to Shoki Murakami, which you know if you're gonna give it to a pitcher, it would have been him. But it just does something sits wrong with me when it's like. Okay, why Shikamoto and Oyama were yeah. so much better? Yeah, yeah. But the other thing, why why is Katsuki Azuma winning the best nine, but then the guy who wins best nine at pitcher 
is not the MVP. Like, there's no consistency there. It's almost like when people are like in MLB, it's like, well, he won the Hank Aaron Award, so he doesn't have to win the MVP, and he already got his award. It's just like, what? I am I actually think Katsuki Azuma did deserve best nine because he ate so many more innings than, than Shoki yeah. Murakami. But then why are you giving Shoki Murakami the MVP? It's just like, I, that... Doesn't add up. It's like when they it's like when they didn't give Gene Bach the MVP because they were scared it would make the league look bad, but they gave him the Salamura yeah. instead. It's kinda like, well, we can't give you MVP because well, one, O broke the home run record. And two, you know, uh Stanka won PL MVP. Yeah. PL MVP, he actually ironically, I don't think he deserved. Yeah. Um but and, I mean comparisons. Twenty twenty as well, right? Where they gave Yudai Odo the Salamura, but they gave Sugano the MVP. You know, it's yeah. like they just used those two awards as like, well, we want to be fair. You each get one. It's not. It's like, it sh- shouldn't it be just like the guy that's most deserving gets it, and not yeah. And just like, like, I, I think stop. partially though, partially though, it's because it was between it, like I I think Nomura should have got it in in sixty four, but yeah. and Yoshinori Hirose was the best player on that Hawks team had all timer level season, but once again, that's. We only know that because of advanced metrics and people go, oh, 12 home runs, that's not that much. Yeah. The other guy on his team hit 40. Yeah. I agree. I think Okamoto deserves it, mostly because, as with Shikamoto last year, I think he's a good blend of the traditionalists and the saber saber ads of, like, yeah. Shikamoto led the league in war, so, and, you know, he had great on-base percentage, you know, high weighted runs created plus. It's like, okay, Shikamoto... You can easily make it. You could easily make a. Yeah, Shikamoto was the saber pick. Yeah, you could make. You can make an. You can make an MVP case for Shoki Murakami. I'm not mad that he got it. You know, it, yeah. if it, as long as it's understandable, like yeah. I got no issues. Yeah, but likewise, like Okamoto this year is, he's second in the CL in RBI and home runs. Uh, yeah. He's also second in war. So it's like, I think Okamoto deserves it. I think people could get behind that, but it is going to be Sugano, let's be honest. Like, they're going to, it just, it's the way the MV, MPB voting works. I'd be shocked if it wasn't Sugano at this point. Like, the more I think, I, I thought at first, like, yeah. oh, this was going to be tight, but it's going to be Sugano. The, the narratives that they're framing around Sugano, it's just like, it's, he led the league in wins. That's enough. If my pick for Salomura would probably be Takahashi. Yeah. Quite frankly, I, I think he's got Psyche has a good case outside shot. Um, I'd even say Emi, you could make the case for him, but his team is really bad, so I, I think they'd be reluctant to give it to him. Um, honestly, any of the top ten, top twelve pitchers in the league, it's a bit of a toss up. Like you could, you could make a case for all of them. Um, but uh, at this point, yeah, it's it's Takahashi it's to lose. And I, I don't think they're going to give it to Sugano just because he's on the pennant winner. Even though he is up there, he is, by some metrics, like the number seven pitcher in the league. But, uh, you know, Takahashi having an ERA under one for most of the year, I think that kind of locked everything up for him. Yeah. Regardless. Only, he, yeah, the only thing that hurts Takahashi is the fact that he didn't have as many innings and also he only had one complete game. Psyche has him in the complete games. So does Togo. Um, mm-hmm. So I mean, it's going to be Takahashi still got he still got qualified. He yeah, got D- he two outs over qualification. So yeah, he needed he needed that for sure. Like he, if he didn't get that, he wasn't going to get Salmer, obviously. Yeah. But um, that also doesn't sit well with me. Where it's like, really, like he got three extra outs. Now he deserves it. Like come on, like the general view around the Salamura, I do think the Salamura needs to be split at this point in time mm. at this to like if you're actually going to be a two league structure yeah but um if you were to call the south people would be mad about calling a p the pl thing the salamura when salamura played for the giants but yeah what would you call what would you call the pl award the starfin <laughs> yeah that would be or would be a good name for it yeah because um, he, he was the kind of guy yeah he was the kind of guy who kind of put the PL a bit on, or maybe the Aramaki. Yeah. The thing that I really dislike about this kind of like simplified way of giving out the awards, it, it's not that like, oh, I like this guy didn't deserve it. It's more like, I think. In the case. Yeah. yeah. And it really, 
makes it like it, it, you should be able to debate these things and have really good discussions. Like award voting should be a time, even with MLB, like as toxic as like the Otani versus judge stuff is, it's like, it makes more people like dig into the numbers, try to make a case for each guy, like have some nuance, have debate, have discourse. I think that's good when you yeah. make it. So it's like most wins gets you the award. It's just like, it kills analysis. It makes yeah. it dumbs down thinking. And it's like, I don't care if, the guy with the most wins gets it in the end, but you need to think other criteria so that you can actually have like good discussions and be like, well, you know, this guy hasn't beat here. This guy hasn't beat here. Like let's, let's talk about it. Like, you know, how much did he impact the the pennant race is like basically the only thing that people look at. And that's just unfortunate to me. I have talked to some older uh, Japanese journalists over the course, like talking about like say your metrics and, and why I feel they're valuable. And the one thing they, they kind of talk about, like, oh, it doesn't, it does, it devalues old players. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. If anything, it lifts up a lot of these old players. Yes, it, it guess you have your cases of like uh, Masahiko Mori, who, you know, is incredibly overrated by those standards. But Mori's legacy, even if he isn't, doesn't have a legacy as a player, Mori's legacy as a manager more than makes him a Hall of Famer, you know? Yeah. And even then, like, I think if we had the technology we do today and we, we were to time travel back to the 50s and 60s, I think Maury would be sabermetrically a better catcher because he framed yeah, like sure. really well. Like that was kind of like his his thing was framing. Did he have some help from some biased umpires? Yes. But, um, you know, it, like people always talked about like Maury is the proto framer and I've seen some stuff of him where it was like, uh, I think it was it was Horiuchi and Kunio Junouchi pitching to in the '60s, and you just watch him go to work behind there, and you kind of see why. Like, yeah, yeah, he may not have been the best with the bat in his hand, but they called him the brains of the V9 for a reason, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I think this kind of analysis it lets us give players credit where they deserve. Like, for instance, I was talking shit about Takia Kai for two years because his framing metrics were terrible. Well, he improved them this year, so now I give yeah. credit. It's like. You know, and, and that's not like a lot of Hawks fans are saying, you're just hating on Kai for for X, Y, Z. It's like, I have nothing against him as a person, as a player. It's the fact that his framing just, was bad and he's, you know, was I, rated I as... I feel that his, his standing within the, the, the views of the average fan is not quite deserved. And here's my reasoning why. It's yeah. One of the and it's like, like now that he's improved the framing, it's like, okay, now he does deserve that standing again. Because I you know back in the day, one he, of the reasons I chose to, to, to write about baseball as opposed to the other sports I played growing up is because there's a lot more data you can look at and you yeah. can point at and go like, I understand what you're saying, but do you have something to back up your argument? Here's what I have to back up my argument kind of thing. Yeah. And I think yeah. uh, more discourse is always good. That's yes. at the end of the day. It's like, that's why we do these podcast that's why you know we try to make the japanese baseball landscape accessible in english it's like do these discussions deserve to be had and at the very least we can be on the frontier of the english side of things like when you know english speaking npb fans we can try to lead these discussions so yeah yeah um i guess that does it is there anything um you want to talk about i know gaijin baseball your channel is having more uh, kbo stuff uh, lay it all out for us I'm, I'm doing a bit more kbo stuff uh i am planning on remaking one of my biggest videos uh this off season but doing it in a way that um you know allows me to get more content and kind of set up something uh over the next three months or so um and uh, I'm d- digging into a lot of numbers, and I feel like it's something that uh, you're going to enjoy. Um, you know, uh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to overpromise, and it because Lord knows I've done that before. Uh, but uh, I've got stuff in the pipeline, um, and uh, I'll do more KBO stuff if Status gets its crap together and actually makes you know an English site because. Sure. What's really frustrating about Status is they have, you know, the ability to do all this because, like, all when you click on a player profile, their name is Latinized. It, like, you have the name in Hangul and you have the name Latinized. And I'm like, why can't you just have a box yeah. like Delta Graph Status where you can click it and go English? Right. If they did, the, like, you already have the data in the back end. Anyway, so I'm rambling. But, uh, no, uh, thanks again, Yuri, for having me as always. Uh, 
and uh, follow me on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, my Reddit got completely nuked, so uh, that that won't be for at least another hundred days or until I move house and they, you know, I can set up a new IP address and make sure I'm not, you know, getting flagged for ban evasion and all that stuff. Um, but uh, I may post more on Instagram, especially if YouTube does go through with the three minute shorts policy. I might make more of those. Um, but, um, yeah, Instagram's a bit of a placeholder for now, but whatever. It's, you know, I'm out there. You can find me at Gaijin Baseball pretty much anywhere aside from Twitch, unless someone's made a Twitch account with my name, <laughs> in which case that's not me. But, uh, yeah, um, doing a lot more videos, trying to get a bit more of a schedule going and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Uh, I hope to have you on again a few times in the off season. Uh, let us know in the comments below what your predictions are for the MPB postseason. Of course, should be exciting. MLB postseason has has lived up to the hype so far. Let's hope MPB is the same. <laughs>